Catholic school and college seminary. And welcome to the pastor's page. This page, and in particular this video, has been designed for faithful pastors who seek to fulfill their calling from God to minister to the flock. In fact, the entire seminary has been developed with this in mind, designed as a genuine resource for those who have received the unshakable conviction that it was God who called them to pastor, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. It's my unshakable conviction that nobody can tell a pastor what he needs to be doing with his time. Pastors labor and watch out for those who must give an account for the souls that they are shepherding. And they answer to God then, not to man. And men cannot tell a pastor what to do with his time. However, at the same time, I will boldly and unashamedly proclaim my personal conviction that Scripture reveals a pastor is called to equip the saints for works of ministry. To make disciples, to teach their people sound doctrine, lest their people are tossed about by every wind and wave of doctrine that comes by. And I trust that faithful pastors right now hearing that have an amen welling up within them. Each of the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, powerfully sent forth the charge to labor in the area of sound doctrine. As Paul told Titus to be holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict, telling him also to speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Paul told Timothy to give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, taking heed to yourself and to the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. And Paul said to Timothy regarding the pattern of sound words, the sound teaching, the sound doctrine which he had received, and the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Therefore, Pastor, who are you teaching? Which faithful ones are you committing the pattern of sound words to? The doctrines of the faith which were once for all delivered to the saints, who are you discipling who will be able to teach others also? School of the Call Seminary has been designed to assist pastors in the fulfillment of their calling to disciple those who will be able to teach others also, as well as to strengthen all of the flock. The seminary has been developed in a manner so that if pastors choose to, they can serve right there in their own congregation as an instructor for the seminary, as a recognized faculty member, uh, as a professor of the School of the Call Seminary, sort of a satellite campus there at your own church, serving at the local church, designed so that both the pastor and those he teaches can even earn collegiate level credits towards a theological degree. And the seminary provides this to the pastor and to all the students, the materials needed absolutely for free. In fact, whether or not a pastor desires to become a part of the seminary, the seminary will provide free, quality, theological materials in order to aid any faithful pastor in teaching and discipling their flock and the great doctors of the faith. Well, how does this all work? Well, like other seminaries, School of the Call Seminary offers higher collegiate level credits and degrees for those who are called into the ministry pastors, teachers, missionaries, evangelists. However, the seminary has also been designed to offer courses which can be taken in the local church for credit towards a theological degree, again with the local pastor serving as the instructor. The seminary offers two tracks of theological study through local churches, the focus being upon the great doctrines of the faith, studies in foundational theology, which is our 100 level course of study, and studies in applied theology, which is our 200 level course of studies. Now, the 100 course of study is designed to take new believers and even those who have been in the church for years but really haven't obtained to a solid place, to a foundational understanding of Christian faith and practice. Even those who are solid are so blown away and enjoy so much, we've discovered, to take these courses and to see how the faith works together. But it covers doctrines in the 100 course that are foundational. The doctrine of God, the Holy Trinity, the infallible, inerrant, inspired Word of God, man and the problem of sin, etc. As well as Christian practice courses and labs, developing a prayer life, personal testimony. One of the labs, if a student wants to get it for credit, wants to take everything for credit, he has to give his personal testimony. And that's up to the pastor how he wants it to be, whether in the class of the five or six or, or 20, whatever he gathers together to take the course, 
then give their testimony there or before the whole church. And Pastor, I would like you to consider that. I've done this. I've had those in my church give their personal testimony before the congregation. And it is thrilling. It is exciting for the person who gives it. And it's exciting for those who hear it. It is encouraging. And I would really encourage that to be something you consider. But also a devotional life. That's one of the labs. You show them how. We give, provide helps for the pastor to do this. But how to develop a, a devotional life in the Word with the Lord every day. I'm telling you, there is an excitement in life, as well as in the congregation, when someone discovers what the Bible says about the Trinity, the God-man, atonement, true church membership, the meaning of the ordinances, how all of these things make the gospel not just so amazing, but important to proclaim. Now, the 200-level course of study, the Applied Theology degree, is designed for those who are serious about serving in the church. Those who will be Sunday school teachers, youth leaders, nursery workers, home study leaders, and those serving in any kind of leadership role in the church. Courses covering building upon the foundational things in the 100 level on Jesus our Savior, on atonement, the transcendent God, heaven and hell, as well as issues being, again, it's an applied theological course. We apply theology to issues today that need to have the voice of the church, the voice of scripture, such as sexual purity. That's a great course for those who will be leading and teaching youth. And topics like creation and abortion. The topics covered should greatly bless those who are hungering for the word of God and serious about being a servant in the local church and beyond. And you can read more about how all of this works in the school catalog, which is on another page here on the website. But let me get to the nuts and bolts then of how all this works in the local church, especially regarding how a pastor can serve as the instructor for a seminary in his own church, even if he doesn't hold a theological degree himself. Now, this certainly calls for a brief explanation for someone's going to be wondering, how can a pastor without a theological degree become a teacher for a seminary? Well, that gets right to the heart of the unique design of the seminary, which is designed with pastors in mind, having pastoral influence in the seminary, which is one of the great missing ingredients in so much of what passes for higher Christian education. The Office of Degree Authorization in the State of Oregon regarding the process of certification as a degree-granting school, exempt from state oversight on religious grounds, states that faculty members must either hold degrees, and not honorary degrees either, they have to be earned degrees, they must either hold degrees or, and I quote, faculty must possess sufficient compensatory qualifications to substitute for academic degrees in the fields in which the faculty members teach. Now clearly, compensatory qualifications has opened wide the door for faithful pastors to truly serve as faculty members of the seminary for the lower level courses, the foundational courses that can be offered in the local church. For typically, pastors have gone through a number of evaluations and written a number of doctrinal statements or some similar process in order to be recognized or ordained by a local association. Furthermore, faithful pastors, many of them for multiple years, have routinely preached and taught upon the core doctrines of the faith. Faithful pastors are able to sign the seminary's core doctrinal statement, are truly able to be approved by the seminary as qualified to serve as an instructor for foundational courses within a local church. In fact, by and large, if anything, such ministers are greatly overqualified to teach such courses. Now, a pastor might be concerned, though, about what about grading and record keeping for those they teach? But the seminary has been designed so that this is no burden to a pastor at all. All the lower level courses are simply pass or fail at the pastor's judgment when the pastor believes that those who've taken the course understand the doctrine being taught. And then the student tells the pastor when they've completed all their lab work. For the lower level courses are mostly a lecture or call it a Bible study, and then there is lab work for the student to fulfill. For it is religious, theological, Christian education that a seminary teaches, and the lower level courses are both valid and necessary to anyone gaining a true Christian education and, uh, of course, a theological degree. And there's no reason why these should not be taught within the local church. Let me just say that there's a great need for a seminary like this. There are so many seminaries out there in which students are receiving that which is not even grounded in the foundational teachings of the faith. Uh, without a foundational teaching, 
they become prey to every new fad, theological fad that's being taught. And the results have been terrible, horrible, worse than that. I myself as a pastor, and I know many other pastors would testify, have seen solid youth sent off to these places only to return in a compromised or in a ruined spiritual state. Now, of course, the higher courses offered to the seminary, as with any post-secondary educational institution, are graded, and all written assignments must be properly referenced, cited, style, quality, proper English, etc. All that comes into focus then. For the seminary offers both collegiate level credits and degrees. However, none of that takes place at the local church. For again, the seminary has been especially designed to add no unnecessary burden to the pastor's schedule, but to genuinely help faithful pastors who seek to fulfill their charge to disciple, to equip their people. And the seminary is committed to making this a joy and a delight, a genuine blessing to the pastor and to the people as he fulfills the charge to disciple his people and the great doctrines of the faith. It is exciting. Now consider how this works. The seminary provides free materials, lesson plans for pastors and their students to use any way they so desire. Again, whether or not they choose to be part of the seminary. Lesson plans that they can use to assist them in teaching the various courses. And pastors are free to teach the courses any way they so desire. For example, there on the screen is a description of course DC 101 on the Doctrine of God, which is the very first lesson in the 100 series foundational theology that can be taught in the local church. And the elements that are there contained in that description, these the teacher must incorporate. Now, he doesn't have to do it through the notes that we provide, but we provide everything he needs to be able to have material to build a lesson plan in which he can make sure to cover all those elements, but he's free to cover them however he wants. However, the lesson plans we provide will be a great blessing, even if he decides not to use them, just in the fact that he has them to help build his own lesson from. That was really the key in designing them. But beyond that, they make great handouts to the students and even can be the very lesson plan that a person goes through and teaches through these elements. I know a pastor who made up his own booklets that he wanted to do for each class, and he took these outlines that we provide for free, and he also gave those to each of his students as an extra resource. And having the two, what he had come up with, and having this, his students had a wealth of information on the doctrine that they were covering. This is certain. Pastors need to disciple their people in the faith, which has been once for all delivered to the saints. Therefore, I would encourage you to, again, keep in mind the words of 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Therefore, I would encourage you to be sure to labor in doctrine, Pastor, keeping in mind the words of 1 Timothy 5.17. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. And last of all, as I mentioned earlier, let me briefly describe how the process works. On your screen is a picture of our lab sheet. This lab sheet is designed so that a pastor only has to have one folder in which he keeps one of these for each one of the students he teaches, in which he checks off the various lessons that he's taught them once a student he believes has grasped what he's been teaching on the subject. Now the remaining ones under Christian practice, the pastor doesn't check off until after the student turns into him the completed log sheet, which now appears on the screen looking like this. Now the lab is really exciting. We'll start with the 100 log sheet there and you'll notice that there are six items that need to be checked and you'll hand it to them. This, they've attended all the classes, and now they're going to do their log sheets. But they'll have to mark off all the other ones. Number two, public testimony. When they give it, they check it off. Require textbook reading. In order to get credit for the 100-level courses, they have to have read through the entire New Testament, and all, as well as any notes that the professor, the instructor, the pastor has handed out in class. But notice how exciting this is. Number four, devotional study. Prayer and Faithful Church Attendance Labs. They have to be coming to church for nine months faithfully, and during those nine months, this is the calendar, the typical calendar they have. On Sunday, they pray for a prepared heart and for the service, and they go to church, and Monday through Friday, they're having their daily devotional time in the Word, according to class CP119, one of the ones that you've taught. On Saturday, 
They have free read. They can read perhaps from the Old Testament that day, or maybe there's a, an article from a trusted uh, Christian publication that you might recommend for them to read, or they can just give them freedom to choose whatever they want. But this is the requirement for uh, number four. And number five, you'll see there's a Christian service lab. Uh, it includes bringing someone to church or teaching a class, making a meal for someone, yard work at the church. Possibilities are vast and varied. And also a Christian fellowship lab, number six, the last one. And there's certain requirements that they have to meet. And when they've met all of them, they check all the boxes, they bring it to you. You check the final box that you have on your log sheet. And then you contact the seminary and then we send out the diploma of which the pastor signs and you can have your own ceremony there in your church service for anyone that obtains the foundational theology degree. And the same thing works for the 200 level classes. I won't go all the way through each of these, but if you'll take a look on the screen, you'll see the 200 requirements. Now this is a course that builds on the foundational theology program. And this one is for those who probably be teachers and youth pastors, youth leaders, work leaders in the church, Bible study leaders. This one is for those who are really serious about learning. And you know, they'll have certain boxes to check off, but what's really exciting is they're on the second page of their log sheet that, that they keep track of and turn into you once they finish all their labs. There's a calendar, but it includes things that, uh, such as uh, the evangelistic principles being put into practice that they learned. It's being available an hour a week to the pastor to say, hey, pastor, I'm on call. They get credit for that. I'm on call all week long. If you need somebody to take care of something for about an hour, give me a call, and if I can fit it in, I'll do it one day a week. And there are other requirements that you'll notice as you go through these things. Feel free to print them off. These are truly exciting. Can you imagine a church like this, pastor? Can you imagine your people praying for one another, praying for their families, praying for you, looking for things that they can do, looking for people they can invite to church, looking for people they can invite out to lunch after church to fellowship with more. This is exciting, not just in the doctrine that they get established in, which will thrill them, praise the Lord. I have seen this many times, but as well, they'll be serving in the church and this is truly exciting. And those that want to go on, they can turn those credits in towards an AA degree. Now the pastor doesn't finish the AA degree. That's through the seminary direct. We take care of that. They receive all the materials they need for that. The whole AA degree is offered completely without cost. However, there is a suggested fee for anybody that would like to go on for the bachelor's and the master's of theology course. It is a suggested fee. This is a true ministry. We offer all of this for whatever the student can afford. We give a suggested price for the, the course. If they can meet it, great. If they can't, if they feel like they can, and they're the only ones that determine that, that's fine too, as long as they qualify. And that gets back to something else. How does a student get into the higher level courses? It's open to anyone to take the AA and theology degree, of which the foundational ones are taught in the local church first. But if they're going to get a degree through college, they've got to go through our writing lab. The English and, and um, all the punctuation, all of the aspects that go into the paper, how to cite, basically how to be able to publish their work someday. They'll, they'll know the right way how to publish their work. They'll be graded. But that'll be, that'll be something they, they deal with the seminary directly and the pastor doesn't have to work with that. Although there's still something really neat, some pastoral influence you can give. But I'll save that for another time or if you contact the seminary, someone will be glad to explain a little bit more. I will be glad to explain a little bit more on that. It's my delight to talk to pastors on these things. However, the higher level courses, they cannot get in them unless they're able to state, because it's a seminary. It's for pastors, teachers, missionaries. It's not just for anybody. Those who want to go on to the higher level courses, the bachelors and the masters of theology, they have to be able to sign the core doctrinal statement as well as state that they believe God has called them into the ministry and have their pastor or another faculty member express that, yes, I've seen evidence that God may indeed be calling them into the ministry. This is the school of the called. It's not a school open just to anyone. Like the Old Testament, the school of the prophets, as it's popularly called. It wasn't for those 
who were becoming prophets. It was for those who were prophets. And so the school, the seminary, is for those whom God has called for ministry. And the pastor's influence from not just at the base of the foundational theology, but on testifying that, yes, I have seen in this one's life a hunger and evidence towards the fact that God may be called into the ministry. Last of all, I just want to say, we're excited to bless those whom God has called to the ministry through the seminaries, higher level courses of study, but we're also excited to be a blessing to pastors who seek to strengthen their people in the local church and fulfillment of their call to shepherd the people of God. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to know more information, which I hope you will, I would suggest viewing our online catalog as well as calling for more information. The number is area code 541. 714-3626. Leave a message for a return call. You're receiving.